the war against the Combine ended just seven hours after their invasion of Earth. The United Nations offered an unconditional global surrender, an offer the Combine accepted. In the early days of the occupation, national governments were dismantled, their institutions dissolved. The surviving human population, drastically reduced from pre-war levels, was relocated into the few remaining urban centers, the newest members of the Combine's workforce and military. Over the next two decades, the Combine's exploitation of Earth's resources and population grew more sophisticated. Everything deemed of value was shipped off-world, and the dwindling oceans became the most obvious sign of just how quickly the process was proceeding. Humanity itself was just as thoroughly drained. A suppression field was activated, preventing reproduction, while drugs believed to have been injected into drinking water similarly affected long-term memory. It was a systemic process, one intended to make social connection, the basis of any organized rebellion, entirely impossible. It failed, and the Combine would suffer what was perhaps their first real defeat at the hands of the Resistance. Though the mere existence of an armed insurgency suggests some level of weakness on the part of the Combine, for most of its history, the Resistance was largely ineffectual. The Combine's tactics were enormously successful in preventing the formation of any kind of centralized leadership, and large-scale attacks against their occupation were likewise impossible to coordinate. The Resistance was limited to working within small cells scattered across the few remaining major cities, each largely unaware of the other's activities. Generally, Resistance activities were divided along two broad lines. The first was the military component, which conducted asymmetric warfare against the Combine occupation forces. This took many forms, including direct attacks on Combine installations and personnel. Always outmatched, direct military confrontations were typically localized reenactments of the Seven Hour War, brief and ineffectual. But the military component of the Resistance also sought to undermine the Combine through infiltration and covert action. Its members stole and smuggled Combine weaponry, assumed positions of authority within the Civil Protection Forces, and regularly spied on Combine activities. While it was hoped that these actions might eventually erode the Combine's power, influence, and will, the Resistance was keenly aware that military activities had almost no chance of success on their own. They were conducted instead to further the work of the various research teams and scientists. One of the most notable elements of the Resistance was its disproportionate inclusion of former Black Mesa personnel. Many were scientists and researchers who had once worked to understand many of the same technologies and concepts utilized by the Combine. This component of the Resistance was where all its hopes were placed. They developed weapons and tools, but the ultimate goal was finding some method of deactivating the suppression field, or perhaps even severing the Combine's ability to travel to Earth. Active in both groups were the Vortigaunts, an alien species similarly enslaved by the Combine. Arriving on Earth through a series of interdimensional portal storms just prior to the Seven Hour War, Vortigaunts became natural and key members of the Resistance in the immediate aftermath of the invasion. Their telepathy was an enormous asset and key to allowing disparate resistance groups to stay in contact. Their unique biology was also useful in powering generators and other equipment, and could even provide a kind of medical assistance. But the Vortigaunts also possessed a long history with the Combine, and understood more than any human their capabilities, strengths, and weaknesses. Though the origins of the Resistance lie in the immediate aftermath of the Seven Hour War, it was not until some twenty years later that its actions achieved any real impact against the Combine. Its major successes up to that point had been the establishment of a series of safe houses in various rural areas, and an underground railroad that attempted to smuggle key figures out of the Combine's urban centers. Though the Resistance was enormously popular within the civilian population, the Combine's counterinsurgency measures made anything other than small-scale attacks completely impossible. Yet, the sudden and mysterious reappearance of Gordon Freeman transformed the nature of the Resistance. A former scientist who was believed to have died at Black Mesa, Freeman specialized in theoretical physics, yet his value to the Resistance went well beyond his academic accomplishments. 
As if guided by some outside influence, Freeman had the almost supernatural ability to arrive and act at the opportune moments. He was by no means an agent provocateur or highly trained assassin. Instead, by all standards, he was just an ordinary man, but his actions against the Combine were remarkable. Freeman's destruction of Nova Prospect, a Combine prison facility, was the first major victory of the Resistance, and whether intended or not, became a symbol of open rebellion. The uprising began in City 17, site of the Combine Citadel, which served as headquarters for the global occupation. The battle lasted for weeks, with resistance forces swelled by the local population. Though enormously costly, the battle for City 17 ended in the collapse of the Citadel, which simultaneously cut off Earth from the Combine and removed the suppression field. A subsequent battle at the White Forest Resistance Base further hindered the Combine's response, preventing the creation of a new super portal above the ruins of the Citadel. Before contact was severed, the last communications sent by the Resistance made mention of the Borealis, an icebreaker that vanished without a trace from its dry dock. Once owned by Aperture Science, an old rival of Black Mesa, the ship is believed to house a dangerous new kind of technology or weapon something with the potential to bring about a second invasion of the Combine, or perhaps remove their presence on Earth forever. In the absence of any new information, two possibilities remain. Either the Combine have been successfully driven from the Earth, and the Resistance was successful, or the human race is now extinct. Time to choose. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.